Hello Zebras, welcome back. Um, thank you very much for your comments on my last video. I was really touched. I had a really good time. It was nice to be able to see things other than the inside of my hotel toilet bowl. So that was great. And yeah, your comments were really moving and I'm very proud of myself that I managed to go back to where it all began. So this week I've had a really interesting week and I thought I would tell you about it. So yesterday I got the chance to go and see a specialist who is very well known in the EDS community, particularly if you're in uh, the UK. His name is Dr. Kasim, oh well, Professor. His name is Professor Kasim Aziz and he is a consultant in gastrology specifically with hypermobility and EDS, which is exactly what I have. And I've had a lot of issues with my gastric system since time began, since I got sick. Now, the reason I went to see Professor Kasim Aziz is because I believed that I had something called gastroparesis, which is basically where the food just doesn't move through your system and it doesn't leave your stomach. It sits in your stomach for excessive amounts of time. It makes you nauseous. It makes you bring up food that's been in there for ages. And it just gives you a pretty bad time of it, to be honest. A lot of gastro Gastroparesis patients end up with feeding tubes because they can't tolerate food, um, they can't go to the toilet. It's pretty horrific and a lot of my symptoms matched up and lined up very well with gastroparesis so we were convinced that this, this is what I had. I have seen a gastric specialist before um, when I first got sick. He did an endoscopy and told me I had gastritis, which was wrong. I had a sigmoidoscopy, which is basically a colonoscopy, but it doesn't go all the way up into the large intestine. Again, they didn't find anything extraordinary or abnormal. And I tried various different medications to help regulate my system and heal my stomach with no avail. Particularly in the last year or so, my gastric issues have worsened. I can't eat anything with gluten in, unfortunately, which is a lot of things you would you would be surprised. So no cake, it's very sad. No pasta, no pizza, bread, anything like that. Just worsens my symptoms. Um, I have a hideous time going to the toilet to the point where I will sit on the toilet and cry. What is my life? And also I've been battling with horrific nausea. I actually did a video a couple of weeks ago about how I battle nausea, some of my tips and tricks. So if you haven't seen that, click here. It will take you to that video. So I I have been having a bit of a bit of a time with it. And unfortunately I live in the tip top north of England and unfortunately the doctors they're just not very knowledgeable up here and not very helpful. We contacted the EDS Society at Christmas when I was having a horrific flare in which I couldn't even sleep. I was that nauseous. I, I don't think you know nausea until you can't even sleep. And they told us that Professor Aziz was the one to see. And we tried to get referrals and we heard nothing. And he is quite in demand. Eventually, we had to get a private appointment, which means we had to pay quite a bit of money to see this guy but in my mind, it was money well spent. So I made my way down to London on Monday night. So when we went to see Professor Aziz, we arrived at this hospital, which was the fanciest hospital I have ever seen. And I felt so out of place, it's not even funny. So he took me in and uh, took all my history and he laid me down on the bed and did an examination of me and took my resting pulse which was 80 beats per minute i think that's pretty normal and then i stood up and he took it again and i had a heart rate of 110 beats a minute which is quite a lot for just standing up and he said oh boy you have pots which is postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome I had suspected for a while that I probably had POTS. Uh, I get very dizzy in the shower. I can't stand in the shower for long periods of time. I can't deal with heat very well because I get dizzy again and nauseous and my blood pressure has always been very low. And as soon as he told me that I had POTS, he said, I know what the problem is. And that problem is 
dumping syndrome. In POTS patients, we see the opposite effect in the stomach. It's more rapid, the stomach oh, okay. emptying. So what happens is that you eat, and the reason you feel suddenly very full is that it's dumped a lot of the fluid down, particularly if you drink when you eat. Mm -hmm. It's going to dump down quite a fluid and a bit of food into your small intestine very quickly. So that suddenly makes you feel full. Okay. Okay. Because it's supposed to go down very slowly into the small intestine. So if it dumps down quickly, you feel full. And Google defines dumping syndrome as... Dumping syndrome occurs when food, especially sugar, moves too fast from the stomach to the first part of the small intestine in the upper gastrointestinal tract. The condition is also called rapid gastric emptying. There we go. That's, that's what it's called. Which is actually the complete opposite from gastroparesis, because gastroparesis, the food doesn't move at all from the stomach. It just sits there for hours and hours of your insides. Whereas my problem is the food is moving far too quickly through the stomach into the large intestine which makes people feel full very quickly and nauseous and makes them vomit. Now the problem I have is because I have EDS, my colon and my intestines and stuff can't evacuate the waste because my collagen has made things so stretchy that it can't pass through my colon efficiently and every day basically. Um, so I go to the toilet without being too much in detail, every three to four days to evacuate the food. <laughs> and obviously I didn't realize this was a problem. I thought that was normal. Turns out, no, you're meant to be going to the toilet every single day, which I have never done in my life. Now, dumping syndrome on its own is quite horrible and and I found a guy on YouTube who illustrates that point quite well. And I believe I'm having a dumping syndrome. I think I ate something I shouldn't have ate. And it hurts really bad. Squeeze it. I feel like I'm just squeezing it. I'm just trying to get the food through. I feel like I'm going to throw up. I'm breaking out in a sweat. But because I have the issue with my EDS and it can't evacuate the food, it is building up in my intestines, it's not going anywhere. And he described it as... If you take the analogy of the gut being like a river, it has to flow every day, we evacuate the waste, and new waste comes in and then we evacuate every mm. day, so it's flowing. And mm. when it slows down to the extent that nothing is moving for three or four days, it becomes like a pond. Okay. Mm. So in a pond, you don't drink water because it is infected. Yeah. So the gut is full of bacteria in any case. Mm -hmm. okay? And when it's not moving, it's stagnant, you get more unhealthy bacteria. They get rid of the healthy bacteria and then they have a field of diet. They ferment your food. Nice. So Professor Aziz was very helpful and he provided a sheet of real food versus fake food. Um, so he said that with a diet change and a whole buttload list of supplements that my stomach and gastric issues should, hopefully, begin to repair itself and should be much better. Unfortunately, that means that I have to cut out pretty much all sugar, which is sad because I like chocolate a lot. He also said that I can't have any grains, so I already knew that I couldn't have wheat and pasta, but grains goes further than that, it's rice, which I have been living off pretty much for the last two years in the substitute of pasta, so no wonder my insides hurt. Of course I will keep you guys up to date with my progress, but hopefully, hopefully this is going to make things a lot easier for me because I have had such a difficult time of my gastric intestinal system. Um, I would say the nausea that I have suffered with has been far worse than any pain that I've ever had. I would take pain over nausea any day because nausea is so debilitating. You can't do anything when you're nauseous. You can't even sleep. Um, so he has now said that I need to go and see a pot specialist and hopefully the pot specialist will help even further in understanding my body because it has baffled many specialists for many years. Apparently, also interestingly enough, which I, I don't 
necessarily agree with, but apparently EDS patients with POTS don't have gastroparesis, which doesn't make any sense because a lot of people that I see in my EDS groups have gastroparesis and POTS and the whole lot together. So that's why I think I was so convinced that I had gastroparesis, but it's, it's very interesting that actually the problem is the opposite. Um, the food is going through too quickly. So thanks body. Anyway, next week I think I'm going to be talking about my experiences with traveling in a wheelchair uh, across different countries and traveling just generally with a disability because I've done a lot of traveling this year. I went to America for a month, which was incredible. It was fantastic. So next week I will be talking all about that. So please stay tuned. If you enjoy this video, you know what to do. Hit the little like button. And as always, I appreciate your support. If you guys have heard of dumping syndrome, if you experience dumping syndrome, let me know in the comment section below your experience, has it got better with a diet change? I'm feeling quite hopeful, so I guess we'll see what happens, but I would love to hear from anyone that knows about it. And until next time guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye! See